Hi, I'm Kylie. I'm the winemaker at Rancho Capistrano Winery. Um, I'm here on Cal Poly San Luis Obispo campus where I went to university for four years and we're actually at the vineyards, the Cal Poly vineyards. Um, I helped plant when I was a freshman here about 10 years ago. It's crazy how time flies. So next stop is Paso Robles. We're going to a winery on the east side of Paso. It's really new and state-of-the-art, and we're really excited. I went to Cal Poly. Well, I attended Cal Poly. Oh, yeah? That was Dan. He owns this entire estate. So Kylie called, and she was in Paso Robles, and suggested that it was probably time to come up and do some wine tasting of some of the, the wines we're getting ready to bottle. We're sitting in the tasting room with winemaker Steve Ingram. Steve's a well-known and respected winemaker in the industry. He has a passion for Rhone varietals. He's a really down-to-earth guy, and I think his personality shines through in his wine. As a young winemaker, one of the things I'm here to ask Steve about is how he got his start. I should turn the lights on here. It actually started, uh, my older daughter uh, bought me a home winemaking kit. It was so much less than not so good. Uh, my lovely wife said, well, so do you think you can make wine if you could find good fruit? I said, gee, I don't know, let me find out. And that started a hobby, which then over six or seven years got completely out of control. Uh, I've been an auto industry guy, because that's what you do when you grow up in Michigan. You know, you meet with your high school counselor and they say, well, okay, you want to be a doctor? I said, no, you want to be a lawyer? No. Okay, what part of the car business do you want to work in? Okay, fine, I want to do that. And after a long time doing it, uh, my employer decided to move to Tennessee. And that sounded like a really bad idea after 17 years in California. So we tried something new. So we met Steve Anglum a couple of years ago when we actually thought we were going to be buying this, this winery up in Paso. Um, he had been the winemaker there for some time. We all got together. We loved his wines. We loved his philosophy about making wines. Uh, and this particular property was making about 10 or 12 different varietals. And I think we carry 10 of them in the store now. So the purchase didn't happen. Uh, we were pretty disappointed. But the new buyer, is continuing to, to sell us grapes and juice, and Steve's continuing to make them, so really we haven't missed a beat. In fact, the relationship's probably gotten better. It's been almost exactly 10 years since I began my winemaking journey. I feel like Paso has changed a lot. I want to know from Steve what the bigger picture is. In the 20 years we've been doing it, when we opened in 2002, we were about winery number 68, something like that. Uh, now Paso is something north of 300 to 400 wineries. It's just mind-boggling how much better the wines have gotten. Why do you think that is? It, professional winemaking came to town. People, the whole philosophy of making wine changed. Um, it, it started with Tablas Creek. You had, you know, Stefano Seo from La Ventura and some others who just literally brought professional winemaking to the area. And it's a very competitive business. So once your neighbor starts getting better, you better get better fast. And so Paso's moved from being a little backwater uh, in the middle of California to a premier wine region. It's been kind of made my head spin. So you get the, you know, the dark underbelly of wineries, right? You've got, um, obviously the chiller makes the cold glycol, uh, which refrigerates the tanks. Uh, the warm glycol system for heating the tanks is back there in the back. I'm gonna stand on a scale, let everybody know what you weigh. No, didn't think so. Okay. No woman ever does. I don't know why that is. I don't know. The press behind us, uh, my favorite aspect about this press um, is it's smart. So I can run 12, 14 tons an hour through this thing essentially. So Steve and, and Kylie have a, a unique relationship in that she's kind of managing Steve and the production we need. Meanwhile, Steve is, is teaching her some of the, the fine points about winemaking on the process. Steve actually was responsible for building this entire facility uh, for the previous owner. So the guy continues to be intimately familiar with everything that goes on here, from how we keep the barrels cold to you know, how things are racked and, uh, and sorted and so on. And they've got an amazing little lab in the corner that's pretty high tech for, uh, for winemaking. Winemaking is a really small community. And I'm so grateful to have guys like Steve around that are willing to show me the ropes. Working at a winery is really fun because each day is different and the people you meet are always really interesting. I still consider myself a student and I'm looking forward to learning more tomorrow. Hey, thanks for watching our new YouTube channel. 
it's, it's new to us. We're kind of excited about it. If you like it, please subscribe. You can hit the little notify button at the top also so you know when new content comes out. And uh, feel free to comment and, and help us along this journey.